Hi everyone, my name is May. Today I'm going to take you through how to use Express Scribe to translate documents. But first of all, let's go through the business side of things. Express Scribe has a free version and a pro version. The pro version is the costing about 25 US dollars at the moment and that's about 31 Australian dollars so it's not a very expensive software the difference between the two version is the pro version has the ability to work with uh, different brands of pedals uh, pedals that are not manufactured or related to Express Scribe or NCH um, and the other difference uh, the pro version can be used to transcribe videos while the free version can only do audio I've been using the free version for a good five years before needing to upgrade to the pro version so that tells you there are a lot of utilities in the free version and in terms of the pedal, you can use your existing pedals if you have a pro version or you can purchase a NCH Edge pedal. This is the Auto Edge pedal that comes with the USB cable and you can just plug it into your computer and you, as you can see, there are left, middle, and right three pedals positions you can put your foot on. If most of us, um, as most of us are right footed, um, therefore the default is for the central position to be played and the right position to be revived as you can see um, the pedal is uh, about a hundred US dollars and equivalent to about 125 Australian dollars now I have opened up Express Scribe translation software you can see on top here I have a pro version and First of all, to set up the pedal, you go to Options, Controller, and then you can see the Controller Setup Visa. And then once you have your USB pedal plugged in, you go Next. As you can see that our Auto Edge USB foot pedals already plugged in so you go next and as you can see it's showing here as the three buttons as we mentioned earlier and if you go next and then that's where you can choose the left pedal for fast forward the middle pedal for play as we've mentioned before the middle pedal is the pedal uh, position that you would probably use most in your transcription process as well as rewind um, which is your right pedal um, you can accept such a default setting or you can if you are a left-handed or left-footed person you may prefer to use the left pedal um, as a rewind button and therefore what you can do is you can um, choose uh, the left pedal and change a command and then you can choose select the command say you want the left pedal to be the rewind and then just press OK as I don't intend to change here so I'll reset it to the default commands and then finished and then as you can see um, you um, always enable foot pedal controller if you f 
find that you are not able to use the pedal to control the software, most likely it's because you haven't ticked this box. So once it's set up, you say OK. So now we're back to the home screen and the next thing I'm going to show you is to load the dictation file. So you go under file, load dictation files. So whether it's audio or video, you can load them here. And, and then you can browse the folder that your files are contained in. In this case, um, I'll choose Cantonese audio sample and then I will load it. As you can see on the bottom right, um, there's the bar showing you the progress of the loading. So now my loading has been completed. So you can address the volume of playing here and uh, the speed of the playback, which is a very useful function um, when it comes to transcription, um, because I'm a not fast typist. So um, it helps me to adjust um, uh, the speed to about 90% of the original speed if the conversation is a bit fast um, but uh, any adjustment un to under 90% will distort the audio quality to an extent. Um, so the other feature that I find useful um, is under file. As you can see um, there are various functions for you to export your notes and to um, attach files and so on. Um, what I find very useful is um, special audio process. Sometimes if say the audio has a, um, a conversation in a, ba a noisy background, you may, or if it is a um, secret recording, uh, you may uh, wish to turn on the background noise reduction feature. So I have learned um, these uh, tricks uh, from my colleague, uh, Ilin Ku. She is a very experienced uh, interpreter and translator. And you can also play with extra volume boost, high bass filter, and so on. Um, and then it will um, sort of you know help you to process the file um, and then you can see whether it make any difference or not say if I choose background noise reduction you can see it's the software is processing it now does take a while uh, but I think this is a uh, worthwhile um, because uh, it will make you a lot quicker when you um, after you have started the job and so now if I put my leg uh, sorry put my feet um, on the pedal <laughs> you can see that um, when I put it in the middle uh, button and the file will start playing and I don't usually like the idea of typing it in um, Express Scribe so what I do is uh, I'll usually um, just uh, open up a word file and I would have um, both window open so I can 
do my typing uh, while playing um, the audio in Express Scribe. So I'll minimize the, um, my Express Scribe and put it on top. And then say so I'm using a blank document and then I'll position the window of my word underneath it and then so as you can see I put my feet on the play button this middle button <laughs> and then once you lift the feet the audio would stop playing and then um, if say I want to listen re listen to this section I'll just put my feet on the right button and to a point that I think probably that was the last couple of sentences and then the play button again in the middle so you can use this technique of um, play type and then check and then re retype um, until you get the job done I find uh, this process uh, in general quite efficient um, with the word window um, I will be able to use the various uh, formatting features of word which is not available in Express Scribe uh, node. Uh, if I type uh, inside uh, Express Scribe, um, and um, I have for another uh, presentation um, that I will go into more details as to the format of um, the transcription document. Um, I tend to like to use a two column um, document um, with the left one um, showing the speaker and the and the um, sorry I think I clicked the wrong one um, and the right side showing the conversation itself um, so I'll just open it up for you briefly so you know what I mean so on the left I put the speaker and on the right I put the conversation and and usually on the top I will put a little bit of a translator's note um, to tell the reader what um, various uh, you know um, formatting as um, stands stand for for example italic would stand for you know Mandarin or both stand for English sometimes uh, some speakers may um, have insert um, certain um, English in their Mandarin speech um, so that's uh, another presentation um, thank you for uh, listening and um, I hope uh, you have uh, learned something new today